Hey guys, it's Matt with Meat Church. Well, the cooler temperatures are here. I got my Howler Brothers flannel on, so I figured it's time to make brisket chili. So we shot a chili video last winter that was wildly popular with you guys, but I thought we would make my favorite chili, which is brisket chili. It's great for a bunch of reasons. I mean, who's going to argue with putting brisket in chili? But if you watch my brisket trimming videos or my how to smoke brisket videos, I trim briskets what I would call pretty aggressively, but I use all that trim. Uh, so today we're going to leverage where some smoked brisket that I have uh, vac sealed up and I portion them out in one pound packages and we're going to put that in the chili today, but more about that later. So let's get into this. Ingredient wise, we've got an enamel Dutch oven here and we're gonna start out with, these are crushed tomatoes. It's a 28 ounce can and a 14 ounce can. And I went with fire roasted because that's obviously gonna play well with chili. And then I have a 14 ounce can of diced tomatoes. And as you can see, also fire roasted. So this is gonna be a great flavor in and of itself. The next thing that I do, this is similar to last year's recipe, slightly different. I brought my induction burner out here uh, in the outdoor kitchen and I chopped three medium red onions and I got a 3.7 ounce can of chipotle peppers and adobo. That's four of those peppers. I got uh, three tablespoons of minced garlic. I diced those up, I mixed it all together, and I sauteed it. So I cooked it down, and this is what we've got here. And by the way, this smells amazing. You might think it sounds like a lot of onions, and you can see three onions cooked down to this. So it, it cooks down really good, but just trust me on this. Um, it, it feels like a lot when you're chopping it, but it actually works. And you would know if you've made um, our previous recipe. So let's get in to the meat. What's different about this, why brisket? So we've done a couple things. So from my brisket trimmings, I took raw trim and I used my grinder. I use a made with meat grinder and I put it on the coarse grind setting. And this is two pounds of ground brisket. I try to guess about 80-20, just like I do on my burgers. And I sauteed this down as well on the same induction burner. I seasoned it with a little holy cow and I drained it. So this is brisket meat. Now look, if you don't have a brisket that you wanna cut and do that, that's okay. This is really the star of the brisket show, which we'll get into in just a minute. You can substitute this two pounds of ground meat for, you know, just get hamburger meat. Um, Previous recipe this year, I use a little bit of ground meat and I use a little bit of breakfast sausage. Um, you want this ground meat to make this chili hearty. So again, if you don't want to buy a brisket, that's okay. Um, but here, this is one pound of smoked brisket. So these are trimmings from a brisket um, that I took off the brisket. I cooked it just like a brisket for you know two, three hours, cooled it off and I vac it and I keep these packages in my freezer. So I'm just gonna cut this open. Some of this is gonna look good and some of it's gonna be itty bitty pieces. It's not gonna be super pretty and that's, that's okay. See, I got, got some big pieces, got some little pieces. You know, just trim. So this is a thin part of the flat. So I got a little bit of the fat in here and I'm just going to cut this stuff up into pretty, pretty small chunks. And this is gonna you know, be in this chili and simmer all day. So let me get all this cut up. got this brisket cut up it's very small pieces uh, this is you know again gonna make for a very very hearty chili and it's you know great use of that trim it allowed you to trim your brisket to a point where it would cook very evenly and yield a superior brisket um, and also giving you a use for all that trim so before we mix that up I'm gonna get my seasoning 
So we're using our Meat Church Texas chili seasoning, of course. I love this stuff because a bag is enough for several batches. Okay, we are going with five tablespoons. Now, on this, if you want it a little less spicy, go with less. If you want to kick it up, you can certainly go with more. You can even add cayenne if you want to, if you, if you really want to kick it up a notch. I'll tell you, I went with a lot of meat on this one. So this is about three pounds of meat. And when you mix it together at first, um, it's going to look like it's just like a ton of meat, but we're going to simmer this all day. And so as this meat breaks down um, and all this stuff melds together, it will become a lot, you know, juicier, so to speak. And you'll see that as we, uh, as we cook this. So now I've got it pretty well nice and stirred up. I want to talk to you guys about how we're going to cook it. If you want to make it more liquidy, another option is to pour a little bit of beer in here or some kind of like a beef broth or something like that. Sometimes our last recipe, we do, you know, we do use beer. We're not doing that today. Man, this smells awesome. So let's talk about cooking this. You can cook this a lot of different ways. Um, you could simmer this on your stovetop all day long. Um, you could cook it in a crock pot. But you guys know me. This is my outdoor kitchen. I cook everything outside. On top of that, I want to add another smoke element. That brisket meat had been smoked, so that's going to infuse this with a smoky flavor. But I'm actually going to cook it on my smoker all day. Um, I'm cooking it on the mill scale, 94 gallon offset. You could do this on any type of smoker. Um, very easy to do in a pellet grill. Um, I love to prepare this the evening before, put it in the refrigerator, put it in a pellet grill uh, in the morning when you go to work and let it ride all day if you want. But I want to put even more smoke in this. So now that I've got it nice and stirred up here, I've got my mill scale running right at 250 degrees. Of course, we're running post oak like we normally do. I'm going to put this in uncovered. Now, all this stuff is cooked already. So you're just heating it and you're letting all those flavors meld together. And I'm going to opt to run it all day long. I'm going to come in here as the day goes on and I'm going to stir it up several times because the smoke is hitting the top here. I'm going to stir it and, and change the surface um, to allow smoke to just, you know, get all over this thing. So I'm going to stir it throughout the day. But it's morning here, and we're going to eat this for supper, and it's going to be awesome. So I'm off to get Meat Church work done. I'll see you all later today. Okay, guys, we've been smoking this chili all day. We're, we're at around seven hours right now. Man, it's smoky. And as you can see, it's broken down significantly. It's a lot more juicy, and you can really see where the big meat chunks are breaking down. It just looks like a bunch of little strands in here now. Uh, but I've come in here 45, every 45 minutes or hour and just kind of changed the surface area of this chili so that it can get smoke on it. Now, I remember, you know, how long you do this is up to kind of your preference. If you only did it about an hour, those big chunks wouldn't be broken down, even though it's all, you know, fully cooked. For me, I, again, I love to put this on early and let it ride all day and have it for supper. So we're going to be going for probably about eight hours or so. I mean, we're, we're pretty well done, but uh, I'm going to let it sit because it's not quite supper time. Pull it off in about an hour and it's going to be time to eat. So I'll see you all then. Supper time's here, it's time to get this chili off and get it cooling, and man, it smells awesome. Whew, man, that looks good. So good. Well, I'm gonna ladle some out. You know, I gotta take a bite for y'all, but this is gonna be insanely, insanely hot. Let me stir it up here a little bit. This is meaty. Big old chunks of meat right there. I'm gonna, put, I'm gonna put a big, look at that. Big old piece of brisket right there on top. Okay, well I'm gonna let that cool off. And after it cools, we're gonna come back and see how we did. All right guys, this should be cool enough to eat, but I want y'all to come in tight and take a look at this. Look at all these huge chunks of brisket 
right on top. I mean, you know that's going to be super good. And by the way, one of the most controversial statements in cooking, you know, are questions, uh, can you put beans in your chili? I'm sure they would be delicious. I always say, pull your head out of the recipe, make it your own. Nobody gets to tell you what you like to eat. So if you want to put beans in, knock yourself out. But we got to dress this thing up first. I'm going to start with sharp cheddar, which is something that I like. And then I'm going to go little, uh, little white onions. That's pretty traditional at first. And, and you guys can see we're, we're serving this with our jalapeno cornbread. Um, another option that's really big in Texas is, frankly, just to serve it with fresh flour tortillas, um, which we have here as well. And I'm going to go a little green onion. You know, jalapeno would be a good choice. I'm going to make it look nice and pretty. Man, it's crazy. It's just a few days from winter here in Texas. And it's, it was really cold this morning, but as the day's gone on, it's, it's gotten a lot warmer. And I don't want to get chilly on my pretty um, Howler Brothers flannel. So I'm going to come out of this before we eat. And uh, it's time to, time to see how we did. All right. Dig in. I want that big meaty bite right there. I ain't mad at that. Dude. I'm sure the beans will be delicious. There ain't no Texan choosing a bean over brisket in their chili. Man, that is super, super good. You guys gotta try this. Um, if you like this video, please subscribe. We've been pumping these out every single week. Uh, we're super proud of them, so subscribe to the channel. Tell your friends about us. We'll see y'all next week.